All right, let's go. Uh, we had 1.6. It sat right here, okay? Um, and we're that was the word problem section. So I used to put the word problems in with this section. This test wasn't very good then. And now since we were able to just focus on those word problems, for most of you, it ended up being a pretty good test. Uh, I did have some people like, I think I should retake that. Uh, you know, like if you scored like a 12 out of 28, it might not be a bad test to retake. But if you scored that like a 22 out of 20, you're like, oh, that's a bad score for me. I would wait on that because that was only half of a test grade. Uh, this has potential to be a great test for people. Okay, so the hardest lesson is tomorrow. If you could get tomorrow's lesson, you could get an A on this test. Simple as that. So we're doing inequalities. Let's do it. Linear inequalities. Linear. Linear. What does linear mean? Yeah. What power? First power. Yep. Second's quadratic. So we add the 7 and we get negative 2x is less than 16. What do I do when I divide by the negative 2? Yeah, I, I flip the sign. That has everything to do with our number line and the fact that 2 is less than 8, but negative 2 is greater than negative 8, right? I mean, that's just the way our number line works, okay? So if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, switch the sign. So a couple times here, I'm going to sketch the graph as well. On the test, you're going to be asked to express your answer in interval notation. So I always tell people, if you're confused, sketch the graph, open circle. X is greater than negative 8. So I have the inequality and I have the graph. The interval notation in this situation will be negative 8. Whoop. You're a sideways man. Negatively infinite. All right. <laughs> compound. <laughs> compound inequalities. Okay. What does compound mean? More than one. Yep. So I know that people have different ways of doing this type of problem. I like to actually make the two inequalities. Negative 9 less than 3x minus 7. And then the other one is 3x minus 7 is less than or equal to 11. I know a lot of people will add 7 to both sides, divide through by 3. Um, I like to just make two inequalities. Okay. So I add the 7. Negative 2 is less than 3x. A lot of people like to write the x so it's on the other side. So x is greater than negative 2 thirds. x is less than or equal to 6. So um, as it's written like that, it's a conjunction, which means that your answer will be an intersection. So as we look at this graph, we'd have a negative 2 thirds and a positive 6. And you see that it's greater than negative 2 thirds. It's less than a 6. Less than or equal to 6. So my interval notation, negative 2 thirds, 6. What's different about the second problem? Disjunction. So that's that's a union. Okay, we're saying that could be either these values or these values. This one's saying it has to satisfy both of these pieces. Okay, so we divide by negative four. Switch the sign. X is greater than negative two. If we add the five, we get X is less than uh, negative five. Sorry, if I add the 3, I get x is less than negative 5. Sorry. Always thinking ahead as a teacher. You know, make mistakes. x greater than negative 2. I'll sketch the graph just so I don't make mistakes on this test. It is a disjunction. You can see that they go apart from each other. Junction, junction, what's your function?
I did a different hour. Nobody like said anything. I was like, all right, I guess, I guess the joke's over. I guess I'm another year older. That's the tough thing about being a teacher. I get a year older every year. You guys are always the same age. Creepy. Oh, not creepy. Okay. Um, there we go. So when you have two that are joined together, you must use the union symbol. The union symbol means it can satisfy that interval as well as that interval. People ask, do I have to use the union symbol? Yes. It's a U. It takes 0.3 seconds to draw it. You'll be okay. Flip it over. All of a sudden, we get to absolute value inequalities, and then our brain starts to hurt a little bit, okay? But fortunately, we got some helpful hints that you're going to remember. This one says the absolute value is less than a certain constant. And you remember this less than. Remember that? You can tell right away that it's going to be a conjunction. That you're going to have arrows that will come together for this one. And then with this absolute value, you see that it's greater than. Great or. I don't know. I never heard it when I was in school. Jeez. All right. Uh, this is going to be a disjunction. And they're going to go apart from each other. That's only true with absolute values. Okay, this isn't like you you apply this to other inequalities. It's just absolute values. Okay, that's probably why I don't really like the little tricks of the language because they're like, well, when do they apply? When do they not? Let's well, even just remember why it works out, which is what I'm going to require you to do right now. Let's think about the situation. Suppose you don't get a constant on the other side that's positive. Suppose we get this. An absolute value is greater than a negative. Think about it. If you take the absolute value of something, it will always be positive. Can this expression ever not be greater than a negative value? No. It's always greater than a negative value, isn't it? So if you ever see that, you know the solution. It's all real numbers. Negative infinity, infinity. You plug in whatever you want, it's going to be true. Or you put an expression up here, absolute value of negative 2x plus 1 is going to be uh, greater than negative 4. Well, duh, it has to be greater than negative 4. Uh, all real numbers. I don't even have to do any work. Right? But if you see this, well, you got to divide off the negative 1. And that makes you change the symbol, and then, oh, now it's different. Right? Look at this one. Absolute value less than a negative. Can an absolute value expression be less than a negative? No. Like that? That's fine. Can an absolute value be less than zero? The next one is very similar. You already told me it can't be less than zero, but could it be equal to? Yes. So there is one solution here. Tricky here. Could an absolute value be greater than zero? Would it be greater than zero all the time? Just one spot, it wouldn't be, right? So this excludes one value. So, for example, your, your answer for there might be like, say, negative infinity to zero union with zero to infinity. So what, what value am I excluding there? Yeah, it's not included, right? So just excluded one value. Okay. 
And then this one, greater than or equal to zero. All the time, right? All right. So, uh, unfortunately, um, for some reason, we encounter some situations on tests where we don't always have success. This is one. I don't know why, but people maybe just move through it too quickly. Uh, one mistake that people make is with the absolute value. They they don't move the nine over right away. You you got to make sure that you have just an absolute value on the left hand side, and then uh, deal with whatever you have left over on the right hand side. So I have absolute value two x minus three is greater than thirty. And now the rule of thumb is when you get rid of an absolute value sign, for example, if the absolute value of x is equal to 5, I have two solutions. What are those two solutions? Yeah, 5 and negative 5. So the rule of thumb is, is that when you get rid of the absolute value signs, you need to uh, uh, make two equations. One that's positive. And one that's negative. And when you when you make the other one negative, you got to flip the sign. Okay, and then you just solve both. Now, ahead of time, I could predict: is this going to be a disjunction or a conjunction? Disjunction. Why? Great or then great or then. So we add the three to x greater than thirty-three x greater than 16.5. So you told me it was a disjunction x less than negative 13.5, so that's from negative infinity to negative 13.5 union with 16.5 to infinity. This is review, right? You've seen it. Plus, practice isn't bad. So, try B on your own. Try B on your own. worked it out make sure you check your answer and verify it's correct I knew it would be a conjunction because I saw the less than symbol I checked that, that's the reason why I like to make the inequality as well as the graph as well as the interval it kind of checks your solution and obviously you can plug your answers back in okay so for example what's a number that should work if I plug it back in yeah, I can plug in 4. I like 0. Uh, 3 minus 0 is 3. Absolute value is 3. Is that less or equal to 5? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yo. Yeah. Right before you take off the absolute value sign. So, it would be at this point. Yep. Because if you have a negative sign symbol in front of it, then you got to divide that off. That will change the sign. So it's got to be when you have the absolute value. Okay? Is that better? All right. So C and D are going to go real quick. What do you notice about C? Okay, great. Divide by the 6, but still we got this interesting bug on the other side. Anytime you come up with a 0 or, yeah, there's going to be just one solution. I mean, it can't be less than 0, can it? No, but it could be equal to 0. So x minus 5 is equal to 0, and you get x equal to 5. No. Because watch. If you said x was less than or equal to 5, if you plug in 5, 5 minus 5 is 0 times 6 is 0. That works, right? But try plugging in something less than 5, say 0. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Absolute value is 5 times 6 is 30. Uh-uh. Right? So when you come up with 0 or a negative, you must use your brain. You must think about the logic of the situation. 
Same here. Absolute value of 2x minus 3 is greater than negative 13. I moved the 18 over. I now have a negative 13. Why, Grace? Because an absolute value is always positive. Is a positive always greater than negative 13? Yeah, so your answer is all real numbers. Because we knew there would be one solution. It will never be less than zero. It can only be equal to zero. No, 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 no. Sorry. This was Liz's question. She said, why isn't it X less than or equal to five? This is our answer. Sorry. Sorry. Wiggle, Liz. All right, here we go. All right, last piece, okay? This is review as well, but you should have an eye-opening experience here, and this will uh, be a precursor to tomorrow's lesson. Tomorrow's lesson is extremely important for you to have success on your test, and it starts today. Now we deal with nonlinear inequalities. What, is, what does it mean to be nonlinear? Not a degree of one. All the things that you've learned about solving equations or solving inequalities so far, they, those don't work when you get to nonlinear. It doesn't work. For example, you'll get x squared plus 2x minus 15 greater or equal to zero. You'll be like, I don't know how to solve that. You'll factor it. x plus 5 x minus 3 greater than 0. You're still on a good track. And I'm like, way to go. You're there. And then you'll do this. x plus 5 is greater than 0, and x minus 3 is greater than 0. Looks reasonable, doesn't it? It totally doesn't work. You're invoking the zero product property, aren't you? Well, that's the zero product property of equality, not of inequality. You got two options here, folks. Test or graph. We're going to practice both today. And this will give you an idea of what we will have to do tomorrow. Because tomorrow, you have to just test or graph. Here we go. I make a number line. I plot that negative 5. And I plot 3. What do I get if I actually plug in negative 5 or if I plug in 3? What would I get? I'm just getting 0, right? Well, yeah, that's a whole, day, a whole idea of finding negative 5 and 3, right? Those are my zeros, right? They will give you 0 if you plug them back in. Okay? So that's where the 0 happens. On the opposite side of them, it's either positive or negative. We have to find that out. Look at what the equation is asking. Big moment here. It, this is saying, where is this equation greater than zero? Or where is this expression greater than zero? What does it mean to be greater than zero? Positive. It's saying, when am I positive? Well, let's figure that out. Let's test a point. What's the number to the left of negative five? Negative 6. Let's plug it in. What's negative 6 plus 5? That's negative. What's negative 6 minus 3? Negative. What's a negative times a negative? I don't even need to compute it. I just need to know if it's positive or negative. What's the number between negative 5 and 3? 0. 0. 0 plus 5, positive. 0 minus 3, a positive times a negative. What's the number to the right of 3? Plug in 4, positive or negative. Positive times a positive. So what we've just determined through that little exercise, if you plug in any number that's less than negative 5, you're going to get a positive result. If you don't believe me, try any number that's less than negative 5. You're going to get a positive result. Try any number that's between negative 5 and 3. You will get a negative result. Try any number greater than 3, and you will get a positive result. This is wondering, where am I positive or where am I negative? 
Where am I positive? Because it's saying, where am I greater than zero? So we're wondering, where are you positive? You're positive here. From negative infinity to negative five, union with three to infinity. Now, some of you are like, well, I don't really like the testing point thing. That's fine. I'm going to show you how to graph it. Problem is, you don't know how to graph everything. So tomorrow, I'm going to show you some things you don't know how to graph. And, and you'll have to go to the point testing option. And you'll be better at it tomorrow. Trust me. So I go to the graph. Okay, I've got this thing. I'm going to sketch a graph of it. What shape does it make? Travel, right side up or upside down? Right side up, right? So I've got uh, negative 5. I've got positive 3. Uh, that's where it goes through because those are the zeros. And now let's re-examine our question. Are we, are we wondering where this is positive or where it's negative? So graphically speaking, what does it mean to be positive? Above the x-axis. So my positive here or negative here? Yeah, and you can see, so then from negative infinity to negative 5, I'm positive union with, um, you know, 3 to infinity. It's between there that I'm negative. So I get the same result, don't I? You could choose to test points or to graph. When it comes to quadratics, I think it's easy to graph. But when we get to tomorrow, you want to test points. William, you look like you have a question. No, 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 no. These are x values. Negative infinity is over here. This graph is is trajecting in that direction, correct? So over here at negative infinity, it will be above the x-axis. Excellent question. Thank you for asking. So let's do the quick example then here. How does this factor? x plus 4, x minus 2. So what are my zeros? Do you want to test points or do you want to make a graph? What do you want to do? Oh, okay, all right. We'll, we'll test points for this one. We'll, we'll, we'll graph the next one, okay? How's that? Oh, you're, just, you're the first class that's ever said test points. Like, usually everybody wants to graph. It's quicker, so. We'll test points all day tomorrow. All right. I plot negative 4. I plot 2. All right, give me a number that you want to plug in. Okay. It's got to be less than negative 4. So negative 5. Negative 5 plus 4, negative. Negative 5 minus 2, negative times a negative. 0. 0 plus 4, positive. 0 minus 2, negative. Positive times a negative. Plug in. 3. 3 plus 4. Yeah, positive. 3 minus 2. Positive times positive. Am I wondering where this is positive or where it's negative? Where it's negative. Because it says, where am I less than 0? Or where are you negative? Um... You're absolutely right that if the sign was different, we would have a disjunction. Now that it's like this, we have a conjunction. But you can't apply that all the time. You can't use the great or or the less than in this situation all the time. It won't always work out, trust me. Okay, and I'll show you an example here in just a second. I don't like the negative. So what should we do, Gracie? Bye. Bye. Negative 1, 2x squared. Minus 7x plus 5 is... Does it factor to what? Negative 5. No. Does that work? Yeah. 
What are my solutions? I'm going to graph it this time, folks. We got two and a half and one. Does this parabola go right side up or upside down? Right side up. Am I wondering where it's above the x-axis or below the x-axis? You, you, you got to look at the part that you factored to zero. Okay, That's the part you got to look at. So it's saying where is it greater than or equal to zero. And that's going to be from negative infinity to one bracket union with bracket five halves to infinity. Okay, I'll just show you one trick because Jesse brought it up. X squared plus one greater equals zero is X squared plus one factor. No, you can't use the great or situation or anything like that in this situation. I'll graph it. What does it look like? Parabola that shifted up one unit. When is that greater than or equal to zero? All the time. Think about it. If you square a negative number, it's going to become positive. You're going to add one, it's going to be positive. You do that to positive numbers, same thing. It's always going to be positive. So, see my point? All right. Here you go. If you haven't had an assignment for a while, you guys look like you need to do some math. Uh, 5 through 23, odd. Uh, those are all linear. 57 through 66 are absolute value. And then uh, 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 27 through 34, those are quadratic. Okay? This assignment for 1.7 with inequalities, I would say, is to me, is, is really one of your most important ones of the unit. Um, this is uh, going to be good stuff for you to work through, okay? So nose of the grindstone. Go home, read the Odyssey. Read the Odyssey. Um, do your take-home test. Go to the tennis match in Winona. Go support the swim team. Watch the soccer game tonight. Go to football tomorrow night. Go girls tennis. Girls volleyball, go girls volleyball. Go visit Jurassic Park. What? Yeah. Yes. There's an infinite set of numbers that exist between there. Yes.